back with you again this morning, a snowy winter morning. And this morning we're going to observe Epiphany, which is actually uh, this Thursday, January 6th. But we're going to observe it in our service this morning. And we begin with our opening hymn, In You Is Gladness. <laughs> Jesus, your Son. 
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In him the darkness of your sin is forgiven. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. His Spirit has prepared you to walk now as children of the light. Amen. Praise God for his light and his salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of the Son. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our King, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery 
is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. <coughs> I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. <coughs> Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the gospel preparation, the first verse of the morning star. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
Christ. We're now seated for our sermon here to start proclaiming that the King is here. <laughs> Judgment. 
So the Magi were priests who were very intelligent, very well educated, and they would travel all over the world with the Persian army, with Persian diplomats, and on their own to spread their faith. They were also experts in the stars and believed that they could interpret messages by looking at the stars. So it was one night that they saw this star in the east, and they interpret that star to mean a king had been born to the Jewish people. And that excited them. Because there were Jewish people in Persia from way back in the exile times. They knew the Jewish people. Now they had a new king. And so the Magi probably felt that they could enlist this new king in the battle against Eden. So they traveled to Jerusalem, the ancient capital of the Jewish people, and they went to the present king, Herod the Great, and asked, where is this newborn king? Herod, of course, knew nothing of it, and he thought that someone was planning a coup against him. So he wanted to see, well, where is this rival to my throne so I can eliminate him? He had his religious scribes search the scriptures to see where a king might be born. And they discovered from the prophet Micah that it would probably be Bethlehem, the birthplace of King David, the first great king of Israel. So they sent the Magi to Bethlehem, just south of Jerusalem. And, and Herod said, well, you know, if you find this king, let me know. That star led the Magi to the place where the baby Jesus was. We are told that they worshipped him and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and hoped that he would one day help them in the battle against evil. Now again, remember, the Magi believed there was one God, just like the Jewish people believed. And they knew that there was good and there was evil. And they thought that you had a fight against evil. There was no salvation from God in the Zoroastrian religion. It was all up to you. You had to do it. You had to be the one to do good. And if you couldn't do it, you'd end up in hell until you learn to do good. Well, the problem with the beliefs of the Magi is that we can never win this battle against evil. The enemy is too strong. The temptations are too great. we are too weak. By nature, we are sinful and unclean. By nature, by this original sin we were born with, we're not going to be able to do evil. As the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul once wrote, the good that I know I should be doing, that I never seem to be able to do and the evil I know I shouldn't be doing, that's what I always end up doing. So we're unable to do what the Magi taught we should do. What hope do we have? Well, Prophet Isaiah promised in our Old Testament lesson, the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. This promise was kept by the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. When those magi were looking at the baby Jesus, they probably didn't realize that they were looking at God. Who had come to the flesh. Who had come to live among us. And he didn't come to help us fight the battle against evil. He came to fight that battle for us. To win that battle for us because we can't win the battle. 
Jesus could. And he did. To all who believe in him, to all who believe that he is the savior of sin, that we can't save ourselves. He is the savior of sin. And to all who follow him, he gives the right to be called the children of God. It's all by God's grace. It's not anything that we are. Prophet Isaiah wrote, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. You know, even in this 21st century, 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, people all over the world still celebrate Christmas. That's pretty amazing. Now their Christmas celebration may focus on gifts, and festive foods, and family get-togethers, but still, most people know that Christmas has something to do with the birth of a baby. And like the Magi, most people may not quite understand who that baby is and what he came to do. Which may explain why, when the Christmas celebrations are over, and the decorations have been put away, and all the Christmas cookies have been eaten, so many people who have celebrated Christmas get depressed. Because it's now back to this battle against evil in our lives. Evil that depresses us. Evil that takes the joy out of living. Evil that separates us from other people. Evil separates us from God. But remember, our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen on us. Jesus did not come to help us fight evil. He came to fight that evil for us. The Magi were wrong about why Jesus came. Jesus came to be our Savior, to defeat evil for us, to suffer the judgment of our sins on him so that we might be the people of God. Now, if you believe this, the light of that first Christmas can brighten your life every day of this new year. Even in the darkest of times. As the prophet Isaiah writes, may your hearts be thrilled and exalted because your Savior has come to you. May our hearts be just as thrilled as seeing the baby Jesus as those magi were. And may we believe and follow him as our Savior. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you might abound in his love and his hope for you. Amen. Our creed is in the form of a hymn that's printed in our service bulletin, In God We Believe, so we rise to sing our Christian, a confession of our Christian faith in the words of this hymn. <laughs>
she had brought to honor the infant king, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. May we offer our best to the Lord of our lives this day and every day. With our, With our offerings, we give ourselves to worship and to service, acknowledging Jesus as the King of our hearts and of our lives. You may be seated for the offering here. Trouble, sickness, or need. 
Hear our prayers for the sick and the suffering, especially those in our congregations whose name are listed, names are listed in our bulletin. Comfort all who mourn and sustain them with a confident hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From afar, you brought the Magi safely to find Christ and then safely home again. Send your holy angels uh, before all who travel that they would be directed always in the ways of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are our temple. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor to it. May the babe of Bethlehem, the Christ of Epiphany, shine in you and through you, strengthening your faith and making glad your hearts. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. It's good to be again with you this morning. Please drive safely as you return home. We continue now and remain standing for our closing hymn as with gladness. Minimal. Mm -hmm. 